Wi-Fi 7 or 802.11be, the latest and greatest Wi-Fi technology is officially here. If you want to set up and enjoy the latest and greatest Wi-Fi technology and you don't mind the high price tag, you need a Wi-Fi 7 certified system. To fully take advantage of it though, you also need to have Wi-Fi 7 certified client devices. For example, smartphones, tablets, laptops, and so on and so forth. The only Google Pixel phones that are currently Currently, Wi-Fi 7 certified are Google Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro. Sorry iPhone users because no iPhones are actually Wi-Fi 7 certified yet. In this video, we're going to take a look at the best Wi-Fi 7 wireless routers in three different categories. First, the best entry-level Wi-Fi 7 router. This is probably for someone who wants to have Wi-Fi 7 but without too many bells and whistles and doesn't want to spend too much money either. Category second, the best Wi-Fi 7 router for everyday use. Something reliable in terms of range, speed, and security that can get the job done for an average household doing a little bit of everything. Streaming, browsing, using social media, and even maybe gaming a little bit. Finally, the best Wi-Fi 7 router exclusively for gaming. If you are a serious gamer, you want to make sure you have the best. Don't forget to check out the video description for the latest information and prices of the wireless routers that I'll be talking about in this video. Now, without further ado, let's begin. The best entry-level Wi-Fi 7 router, in my opinion, is the TP-Link Archer BE550. It is tri-band, so we have 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz, and 6 GHz bands. However, the 2.4 GHz band is Wi-Fi 6, and only the 5 GHz and 6 GHz bands use Wi-Fi 7 technology. We will get back to this later. It has one WAN port and four LAN ports, all 2.5 gigabits per second. There is a USB port 2 which can be used to connect a hard drive and set up an FTP server, media server or Samba server. It has six internal antennas. I'm actually beginning to like internal antennas better than external because managing so many external antennas usually results in a device that looks like a spider which is not ideal if you accidentally drop it, you could break a few antennas that are often irreplaceable. That's unfortunately what happened to me with my Asus GTAX E11000. This router can be used as a wireless router, access point, and can also participate as an easy mesh node. It looks like it doesn't support one mesh, only easy mesh, which is an industry standard compared to one mesh, which was only for certain TP-Link routers and range extenders. TP-Link wireless routers in general have great features, usually more than what an average household needs. This one can be 3 VPN clients and 3 VPN servers. It also comes with Home Shield Advanced Security Kit, which is great. Now this TP-Link Archer BE550 is around $250, which as you will see later in this video is by far the least expensive one. Now, regarding the wireless band where the 2.4 GHz is not Wi-Fi 7, one way to handle this situation is by designing the network to accommodate it. For example, I could create separate Wi-Fi names and passwords for each frequency band, using the 2.4 GHz band for older devices that don't require fast connections, but can benefit from the longer range it provides, such as Wi-Fi printers and smart home devices. The 5 GHz and 6 GHz bands which support Wi-Fi 7 can be used for more modern and network sensitive devices. Overall, it is a capable Wi-Fi 7 router. Yes, the 2.4 GHz band is only Wi-Fi 6, but I can design my network to work around this. On the plus side, it is not very expensive compared to the other Wi-Fi 7 routers. In fact, it is even cheaper than many Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6e routers. Let's move on to the next category, which is the best Wi-Fi 7 router for everyday use. Here, I'm going to talk about three different wireless routers and then decide which one is most likely the best. TP-Link Archer BE800, ASUS RTBE96U, and Netgear RS700S. First, let's talk about their similarities and then focus on the differences. 
They are all tri-band Wi-Fi 7 routers. So we have one 2.4 GHz band, one 5 GHz band, and one 6 GHz band. Unlike the previous example, all three bands are actually Wi-Fi 7. So that's good. The theoretical Wi-Fi speed of all three of them is up to 19 gigabits per second. We know that this number is only theoretical and in the real world, for many reasons, we can almost never achieve this speed. But it is still a good indication of how the Wi-Fi speed is when comparing different routers. In this case, they're all the same. They all have 8 antennas. The TP-Link and Netgear have internal antennas, but the ASUS has external ones. Now let's talk about their differences. First, their features. If you follow this series on the best wireless routers in 2024, or if you follow my videos, you probably remember me saying in different videos that ASUS routers have amazing features. I have many videos talking about them in more detail. Features such as using the router as different VPN servers or clients, using its advanced quality of service, changing the operation modes of the router to many different modes, that could come in really handy. I have many videos on those topics and I'll link them in the video description in case you want to know more details. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is that I believe ASUS has the best features with no question. However, I am very pleased with how TP-Link is actually closing the gap. Every year that goes by, I see TP-Link adding something which is really good. So I think they're working on making their routers better and better and I like it. Netgear on the other hand, I think has the least features here. There's still great devices for people who don't necessarily need advanced features. But when it comes to comparing their features, these two, especially ASUS, are more superior. Another difference between these three routers is their input and output ports. As you can see, Netgear and ASUS have more or less similar ports, except for the USB ports where ASUS has two and Netgear has one. The rest of the ports are similar, two 10 gig ports and four 1 gig ports. However, the TP-Link has two 10 gig ports and four 2.5 gig ports. I'm quite surprised that the other two still have one gigabits per second ports and no 2.5 gigabits per second ports. When you buy a Wi-Fi 7 router, you're probably planning to keep it for quite some time because it is new technology. While one gigabits per second ports might be sufficient today, in the near future, especially if your internet speed exceeds one gigabits per second, can, those 2.5 gigabits per second ports can be very useful. Therefore, in terms of ports, the TP-Link is the best option here. Now let's talk about their prices. Just keep in mind that these prices are as of the time of the video. So by the time you're watching this, they may have changed. You can check out the video description for the latest prices. Okay, let's start with the most expensive one. And no, it is not the Asus. Surprisingly, it is the Netgear, which is currently around $700. I honestly don't know why this is the most expensive one, but that's how they price their products. The next one is Asus, which is currently around $600. $677. And finally, the TP Link is around $600. Alright, to sum up, I'll tell you how I personally would decide between these three. If I already have an ASUS router and want to upgrade to a Wi-Fi 7 router, of course in this category, I'll most likely lean towards the ASUS. This way I can still use my older router, set up a mesh network, and enjoy the ASUS features. However, if the TP-Link ports are very useful for my network setup and design, and I'm completely happy with the TP-Link features, I might decide to go with the TP-Link, especially since it is the least expensive. I know there are people who absolutely love Netgear home wireless routers, and some of the ones I have tested are great, don't get me wrong. But considering the price and everything, this particular one doesn't seem to be the best bang for the buck, at least not in my opinion. For that reason, I personally would not consider it, at least not at this price. The final category is the best Wi-Fi 7 router for gaming. Here I'm going to talk about two Wi-Fi 7 routers. Asus ROG Rapture GT BE98 Pro and TP-Link Archer BE900. 
They are similar in that they are both quad band, which is great. And they have almost the same ports, two 10 gig ports, four 2.5 gig ports, one 1 gig port, and two USB ports, which is interesting. However, when it comes to the maximum Wi-Fi speed, the numbers are different. The TP-Link supports speeds up to 24.4 gigabits per second, while the Asus supports speeds up to 30 gigabits per second. This difference is because even though they are both quad band, the bands are not exactly the same. The TP-Link has one 2.4 gigahertz, two 5 gigahertz, and one 6 gigahertz bands, whereas the Asus has one 2.4 gigahertz, one 5 gigahertz, and two 6 gigahertz bands. We will get back to this later. The Asus has eight external antennas, while the TP-Link has 12 internal antennas. Feature-wise, we discussed the TP-Link and Asus features before, so I'm trying not to repeat myself. In my opinion, the Asus has better overall features but the TP-Link is also quite capable as I mentioned earlier they keep adding features every year for example this one now supports WireGuard VPN which is great so personally, if I had to choose between these two, it would come down to whether having dual 6 GHz bands or dual 5 GHz bands is more beneficial for me. Additionally, I would consider whether I need the ASUS WRT features such as the AI mesh system and other advanced functionalities, or if what TP-Link offers is already more than enough. The TP-Link is also less expensive. It is currently on sale for around $630, whereas the ASUS is almost $800. Nonetheless, they're both great, and if I want the absolute best Wi-Fi 7 router, currently these are, in my opinion, the best options. Alright, that was pretty much it. These routers in one way or another are very interesting wireless routers. And if you want the absolute best and most high-end Wi-Fi technology, which is currently Wi-Fi 7, these routers in my opinion are the best ones based on those categories. I hope you liked the video and found it useful. This concludes our series on the top wireless routers on the market. We reviewed the best budget wireless routers, the best Wi-Fi 6 wireless routers, the best Wi-Fi Wi-Fi 6 e wireless routers and finally the best Wi-Fi 7 wireless routers all available in that playlist. So with that out of the way in the next video I'm gonna talk about how and when to decide whether you should upgrade your Wi-Fi system or your home network in general. For example I'm currently using Wi-Fi 6 and I'm not planning to upgrade to Wi-Fi 7 soon. In the next video we're gonna discuss that. If you're interested make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Also let me know in the comments below whether I should go over the best mesh systems or even access points on the market. If this video gets many likes and I see many people requesting it, I'll definitely make those videos. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hit that like button if you liked it and subscribe for the upcoming videos. A special thanks to my followers on Patreon for supporting the channel. If you also want to support the channel, which I would really appreciate it, you can check out my Patreon, which is going to appear here soon. Thank you again and I will see you next time.